So let's rank all the James Bond flicks with Sean Connery. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews presents the Summer of 007. So greetings my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to you as the Big D. This time around I'm going to bring to you a ranking. It's going to be all the films of the James Bond franchise with Sean Connery. I don't officially mean all of them completely, completely, because this is only going to be focusing on the Eon Productions films. So this means, of course, I'm excluding Never Say Never Again. So, he did six flicks with Eon Productions. I hope you are ready for this. So, let's get ready. And here we go. Number six is Diamonds Are Forever from 1971. <clears throat> the second of the four films to be directed by Guy Hamilton. Now, I apparently did enjoy this a bit. Well, even though it may be at the bottom now, but don't worry, I don't hate these films. They are all good. Well, uh, well apparently critics criticized it for its humorous camp tone, well, in retrospective reviews. But it was still well received and what have you. I liked how... Bond got to be played by Sean Connery again after George Lazenby played him in Our Majesty's Secret Service. I apologize for the way my hair is. Okay, sorry. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm glad Connery returned for this. And I really enjoyed the plot of how Blofeld returns and plans to use diamonds to build a space-based laser weapon. That was really something. I really enjoyed the performances we got. Charles Gray did pretty good as Blofeld. But Connery sold the show as Bond again. Jill St. John did real good as Tiffany Case. I think it was pretty good. And, well, what can I say? They were, they were really good in this. Number five is From Russia With Love. From 1963. <clears throat> this was directed by Terrence Young. <clears throat> now, I really thought this was really good. This was six, but now it's fifth now. Bond is sent to assist in the defection of Soviet consulate clerk Tatiana Romanova in Turkey, where Spectre plans to avenge Bond's killing of Dr. No, which we'll see where that winds up. <clears throat> now, I really liked how it was, how it turned out, and Bond take out all sorts of baddies and what have you. I especially enjoyed the ending, <clears throat> where Bond and Romanova spent some time on a boat ride, and Bond throws the film he had. Gone from Spectre into the canal, which that was really funny. And I especially liked Esmond Llewellyn's first appearance as Q in this. I think this was just such a fun filled flick. From Russia with Love, it's really good. And P.S. Don't mind the weed ear going on back there. I humbly apologize for that. It's just some people working outside, so forgive me for that. Just want to get this out of the way. Alright? Next movie. Number four is Thunderball from 1965. Now, this, I think, was really a good movie. Now, this would have been the first of the Bond... This movie would have been the first of the Bond series, if not for legal disputes over copyright, but nevertheless... I really got to enjoy it, though it was in turn based on an original story, as a matter of fact, though not much of the 1961 novel, but still, I really enjoyed how it went into, went into uh, how it, its story turned out. I really got to enjoy Bond's 
mission to find two neo atomic bombs stolen by Spectre, which holds the world ran for ransom of a hundred million pounds in diamonds. But anyway, I especially enjoyed how the um, some of the scenes take place in underwater, and that was really cool. And that it was shot in widescreen pan vision, the first one to be done in that. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of characters were pretty good. Domino and Cat Lip. Yeah, those were all pretty good. Thunderball is absolutely a good flick. Number three is Doctor No from 1962, the first Bond flick. Yeah, the film that introduced the world to James Bond on the big screen, even though Casino Royale was where he got to be shown on a little um, TV program, but I really got to enjoy this. This was really something. Now, Connery really nailed it as Bond in his first performance as the character. Really good. I liked Honey Rider. Very good character. A lot of those characters were good. Dr. No and Quarrel and... Well, one-time performance of, of... And Jack Lord's one-time performance as Felix Leiter as CIA aide operatives sent to... Well, work with... Well, Liaz with Bond. That character would pop up in numerous other movies, but played by somebody else. Of course, Lord would later go on to work on TV's Hawaii Five O. But anyway, Doctor No is definitely good. I like the atmosphere around them and uh, this, and Doctor No's headquarters was definitely really something. Yeah, I do love it. Now for the final two. This was a tough decision. So please don't hate me uh, for having. Well, one say one first. Number two is Goldfinger from 1964, the third Bond film. And this was probably a, one of many, many, probably one of a few or many Bond fans favorite. I really liked this movie, and, and it really got to have a lot of. Of fun stuff like the extensive use of technology and gadgets by Bond, and of course, um, the tongue in cheek humor, yeah. And of course, it's theme song done by Shirley Bassey, who of course would do Diamonds Are Forever and Layer On Moonraker. But anyway, uh, Bond, once again, played by Connery, definitely really good. Pussy Galore, definitely one of the many great, um, Bond girls out there in my book. And Goldfinger, definitely real good. Jill Masterson, another good Bond girl. That was all pretty good. Odd Job, definitely a good, uh, well, side villain aside from Goldfinger. Yeah, I gotta say, this had a whole lot of fun and action and suspense. I really think Goldfinger is definitely. An awesome movie. So, number one is You Only Live Twice from 1967, the fifth Bond movie. Now, this film is definitely one of my favorites. The reason why it's my favorite surpassing Goldfinger is because I have a lot of nostalgia for liking this. Well, not just because Bond. Well, gets manages to survive, but he also managed <clears throat> just to come face to face with Blofeld, who we get to see for the first time completely played by Donald Pleasance. Very good performance of him. I mean, many others played him as well, <clears throat> but overall, I still think You Only Live Twice was definitely really fun. I especially do love its theme song done by Nancy Sinatra. It actually came out the same year that the comical satire of Casino Royale came out, as a matter of fact. But all the characters are absolutely good. Aki and Q 
Kissy Suzuki, Tiger Tanaka, Mr. Osato. Yeah, they were all real good characters. But anyway, I just think this is probably one of my absolute favorite Sean Connery Bond flicks, and that you only live twice. I do love it. So, what did you think of this ranking? How would you rank the Sean Connery Bond flicks? Again, just don't put Never Say Never Again, okay? I'm just doing the Eon Production Films only, and that's it. So tell me what you thought about this ranking, and how would you rank the six Eon-produced Bond flicks with Sean Connery in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, be a part of the Big D Nation. And the summer of 007 will continue next month. I'll give you the announcement when my schedule video comes up. And next time, I'm going to bring to you a Father's Day review of Stepfather 3. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, check out some of these Bond movies. I might as well go ahead and tell you this if you didn't catch my reviews, but I'm sure some of you all see them. But I'll give you the most viewed ones. The upper left-hand corner is the one for Dr. No. The upper right-hand corner is the review of Thunderball. The bomb left hand corner is the review of you only live twice in the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies tv music video games etc then i'm your guy thanks for watching until next time i'm the big d saying see ya